loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new. Today, I am here with my douche. Why are, you, why are you just falling over? It's like all of her motor functions just stopped working. I kind of picked her up and she was like, okay. You're just so precious. See, I need to get groomed. I need a fur cut so badly. Today we are going to talk about a really weird and creepy experience that I had recently going to Disneyland as a little birthday treat to myself. It was not great. I bet if you were there, you would have saved me. Yeah, because you're just a good dog like that. Okay, so I went to Disneyland as a little bit of a birthday treat to myself very recently. On my actual birthday, I was literally traveling across the United States. I was in my car the entire day. I felt like I had earned something a little bit nice, you know? And besides, Disneyland is literally my favorite place. I haven't been there in a few months. And now that I live in LA, it's like as quick as getting in a car and just driving for like half an hour. So I was really, 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 really just so excited to go. I go, I get my ticket, everything is fine and dandy. My ears for this particular trip were actually to match this dress. And here's what they look like. What do you think, Yen? I think they look pretty swell. I really like these ears a lot. They're like the first ones I've ever had with that big bow in the middle, but I thought they were pretty fun. The day was super cool. I also wound up winning a Dumbo when I was in California Adventure, playing some of the games at Paradise Pier. And I love him, I want him all by myself. I had some Dole Whip, I was meeting so many of you guys at the park. Apparently Kim and Kanye were there the same day I was there. The point here is that I was having a great day until I met the biggest creep I have ever met in my entire life. I am the most understanding person when it comes to like people not necessarily saying the right things, being a little bit awkward, being a little bit weird. Certain situations where I think I'm being followed or stalked or anything like that, I am the first one to play it off as nothing because I feel like that kind of stuff happens to me all the time. I tend to overreact and then it doesn't wind up being as big of a deal as I think it is. So I try now to stay very, very, very calm in scenarios like these. But this was the one time that I should have panicked. I need some Annie moral support for this one, girlfriend. I need some Annie support. I was with a couple of people at Disneyland and at this point I was only with one of my friends and we were actually walking to go meet the rest of my friends and all of us were going to go and ride Pirates of the Caribbean, which is one of my favorite rides. We were literally walking from the Haunted Mansion ride to Pirates. So it was a very <laughs> congested walk. <laughs> Thank you so much. Why would anyone want to watch me when you're here? So you know those little bubble maker machines that you can get at Disney where you press down a button and bubbles come out? Obviously, that's the point of them. One of the people that we encountered during our little walkover happened to be a very young child with one of those bubble machines. Now, I love, love, love those bubble machines. Like, do you guys remember that fish from Finding Nemo who was obsessed with the bubbles? I am that fish. So it wasn't bothering me, but the kid wasn't letting up. It was like they were pressing down the button to make the bubbles and they literally weren't letting go. So there were just bubbles absolutely everywhere. And my friend and I were literally walking behind this child. So there were bubbles like flying at our faces, literally surrounding everyone. So in this particular scenario, it was a little bit annoying. My friend keeps like waving the bubbles out of his face and stuff. So I kind of make the comment that, you know, we're behind one of those kids with a bubble machine, but it must be a brand new one because there are bubbles everywhere. And so I'm walking next to my friend on the right. And next to him is this older gentleman that looks to be like maybe in his 60s or so. I really wasn't paying too much attention to the way that he looked in this moment, but I did see him like a million more times that night, so I got to know his face pretty well. He had dark hair with a bit of gray in it, but it was still like mostly a dark shade. He was really tanned, like looked like he was there all the time, and he was alone. There was no one with him, no kids, no woman, no man, no anyone. And I guess that he heard what I said to my friend because he said, oh, that's a real observant one right there to my friend, my like male friend sitting next to me. He wasn't even talking to me or addressing me, this gentleman who said that I was really observant. And I immediately start laughing because yeah, like duh, I just pointed out that, that kid had a bubble machine that he wasn't letting up on. Like obviously that was pretty obvious. So I kind of like laugh to make a joke out of it. This man obviously can't know like anything just by like looking at my friend and I, but he kind of like nudges my friend and is like, you got a real keeper there. It looks like a real smart one. So obviously like he thought we were together or something. And my friend just kind of like looked at him like, it was so rude to say, obviously it was sarcastic, but my friend just kind of like gives him the weirdest look like, what the 
heck, man? And at this point, I'm kind of like nervous laughing because that's all I ever do when I get kind of like uncomfortable or weirded out. But I mean, we don't respond to this dude. Like there's no point in it, obviously. And we keep walking and about a five second window passes and the man says something again. Now granted, we were just kind of like giving him like weird looks at this point. Like, thanks dude, making me feel pretty dumb here. He looks at my friend again. Now this entire time, this is the third time that he's talking about me to my friend and not like to me. He says to my friend this time, real observant. She's got to have new batteries in her, that one. And at that point, my friend just like looks over and says, she wasn't talking to you. So I, I don't know why you keep commenting on it. And I was a little bit nervous. Like this is a friend of mine, but at the same time, we don't know each other that well. Like we're new friends. This is one of the like third or fourth times we've ever hung out. So I didn't know how he was going to react in that moment. I didn't know if there was going to be a fight or something. So I was just kind of like, hey, let's go. They're waiting for us. As in like the rest of our friend group was waiting for us up ahead. So we kind of like pushed through the crowd. When I look over my shoulder, the older man is still like walking in the direction that we were walking in, like walking through the crowd with like kind of the flow of traffic, but he's glaring at me. Like he looks so freaking mad. Apparently I made the right call getting out of the situation because immediately my friend starts talking about like what a douche that guy was, how rude it was, how like it was none of his business and he shouldn't be calling me literally stupid for just making an observation, not even to that guy, but literally just talking to my friend. I feel like my friend probably needs a name. I probably need to stop saying my friend because there are several other friends in this story. We're gonna call him Christopher. Christopher and I meet up with the rest of our friend group. We go on Pirates of the Caribbean. I kind of like tell the story to them about how like this older man literally was like just belittling me for making a comment, not even to him, but in his general vicinity. We all kind of laugh about it. We get gumbo at the end of the night. It's fine, everything is all well and good. We decide afterwards we're gonna go into downtown Disney and just sort of hang out and all of that kind of stuff. And I had kind of forgotten about the entire exchange with this older gentleman earlier. We're walking through downtown Disney and I hear someone say, is that Loey? Like really loudly. And I kind of like glance over my shoulder, but I can't figure out who it is that said that. And as I'm looking around, I see walking, not like directly behind us, but kind of in the same direction we were going, was that older gentleman. That's not weird, of course. We're all at the Disney parks. Um, downtown Disney is literally like attached to Disneyland. So it wasn't strange to see him, but I was kind of like, darn it. Like, I really didn't want another encounter with that dude. I just kind of keep walking and one of my friends is like, hey, like, do you want to look around for whoever called your name? And I was like, no, like, that's the dude. And I pointed behind me and showed them that's the dude who was like being really weird and like was really mad when we walked away from him earlier when we were like walking to Pirates of the Caribbean and they were like, oh my God. So we kept walking and I assumed if it was someone who like wanted to say hi that they would catch up and sadly no one ever did and I'm still really sad about it but I was just so uncomfortable and I just didn't want another run in. We were going to Starbucks just to get a little bit of caffeine before we kept walking around and when I walked into Starbucks I felt the door kind of being lifted so I was the last of my friends to go into the store and I kind of like was holding the door open and I felt the weight being lifted off so someone was like taking the door and I said thank you so much before I turned around and once I looked behind me it was the older dude and he was just grinning from ear to ear and I was kind of like oh god like not this I really I really don't know is he drunk is he just being weird like I don't know I don't care and I'm like oh thank you sir and I kind of like go to keep walking and he's walking behind me going to get coffee or whatever obviously and he says funny seeing you here and I'm like yeah <laughs> I guess. I don't actually say that. I just kind of like nervous laugh and nod my head and keep walking to go get my coffee and I'm just feeling awkward and weird. And the guy says to me, what are you doing after this? And I'm like, uh, this? Like, you're looking at it. This, this is my crazy wild Monday night. I just said I'm hanging out with some friends and I didn't really say anything else because I'm not used to like people just asking what I'm doing. And he said, well, I could give you guys a ride. I have a really nice car. It's a convertible. And I was just kind of thinking, no, 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 no. But I said, oh, that's cool, but we're all right. Thank you so much. And I went, I ordered my coffee. I had my other friends with me who also ordered their coffee and drinks and whatever. And we went down to like the area of Starbucks. You know how you order and then you go down to um, like the pickup counter? We were down at the pickup counter and this was what was so weird was the guy didn't even order any coffee. He was literally behind us in line, didn't order anything and just walked down to the pickup counter. He kept trying to talk directly to me. He wasn't trying to talk to any of my friends anymore. My friend Christopher, who he was speaking to earlier, 
there instead of like you know acknowledging me when we were walking through the park and stuff he wasn't even looking at him he was looking directly at me and like pretending everyone else around me didn't exist and kept trying to say no it's no big deal i live around here i've got nothing going on like all of this kind of stuff like trying to convince me to let him give us a ride to wherever we were going that was when another friend that we're gonna call paul kind of like steps in and is like do you need something dude like what's up what 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 do you want we're not going to get into a car with you we don't know you thank you so much for the offer but we're good it was like very straightforward very stern about it i've known paul for a little bit longer and he's definitely one of those people who like takes charge of situations like that he's kind of like one of those big brother types he was definitely keen on like just solving whatever the heck was going on here the guy looked at paul like the older man looks at my friend and says brand new batteries in that one the same way that he had said that about me earlier when he was calling me stupid. I don't know, it was so weird. Like the Starbucks employees were looking at us like, what the heck, like they didn't know either. But the guy wasn't like doing anything. He was just being creepy. Paul doesn't say anything else. He just kind of like blocks off the rest of us, like the rest of our friend group from this dude. He stands like between us and that guy. So we're not near him. And he's kind of like being the big tough bodyguard type. And we get our drinks and we go outside and the man follows us. Um, we proceed to go through downtown Disney and this dude was just like walking a couple of steps behind us the entire time. And the whole time I'm thinking, should we call the cops? Like, what should we do? Should we tell somebody that he's following us? At one point I decide that that's the right thing to do. It's probably the smart thing to do because I don't know if he's drunk, I don't know what. So I walk up to, there are a lot of like security officers and people like patrolling downtown Disney. I don't know when this happened, but now you have to like get checked before you go into downtown Disney, you have to have your bag checked, things like that. So there's a security guard. I'm just like, hey, this guy's been following me around trying to give us a ride. Um, I don't know, he's just really creepy. I don't know if he's drunk. I just wanted to let somebody know. So at that point, one of the officers actually goes to go and talk to him. And the minute that I walked up to one of the security officers, I don't know if they're cops or what, um, it just said security on his thing, like on his jacket thing. But once I had gone up to talk to one of them, the guy ditched, like purposely started walking in a different direction. So the security officer walks after him. I decide not to stick around. I don't care. We're about to leave. We go, my friends and I, to the Uber pickup area. Annie is just so determined to knock down my tripod, by the way. We're almost done. We're almost done. And then, we, no, but then we can go for a walk. <gasps> You wanna go for a walk? We go to the Uber pickup area and we wind up going through like two or three Ubers before we finally get someone to pick us up. If you guys have ever used the app before, people can cancel on you. And that's basically what kept happening was I think traffic was really bad, something. It was literally midnight at this point when we were getting picked up. So we're there for a while. I would say like 11 or 10 to 15 minutes. 11 was a very precise number, but somewhere in that ballpark, um, we're just waiting for an Uber. At some point during that time frame. Out comes freaking stalker old dude and starts telling us, really, I can give you a ride. Like, it's no big deal. Don't waste your money on this crap. Like, trying to talk to us like he was our friend. And we had already sent like one of the security guards after him. I don't even know what was said then, but here he is at the Uber pickup area. He very clearly has a car to leave with. He's talking about this nice convertible that he has. And he's just trying to tell us how he can give us a ride, this and that. This time, literally, all of us just kind of looked at each other and we turned our backs. I don't want to be rude ever, and I didn't want to be rude then, but I didn't know what to say. I had said, no, thank you. We had kind of like tried to push him away, all of this stuff, and he was still being really, really, really insistent. I don't know if he was drunk, high, what. Our Uber, thank God, comes, we get into the car, and the guy is still like talking to us the whole time, like trying to convince us to let him give us a ride, how he'll drive us forever. He doesn't need gas money. He has nothing to do, um, that he's really cool and he's not being weird or creepy, like all of this kind of stuff. And we get into the car and we drive away and the entire time he's just staring after us and he looks like pissed the same way that he looked pissed when I dragged Christopher away when he was like, trying to talk to him. That's really the story and that's where it ends. Of course, I haven't seen him since then or anything, but I just thought it was so creepy. Like he just followed us all the way through downtown Disney, um, was really, really just so rude. And then what the heck was he gonna do when he got us in his car? Like, it just makes me wonder why he was so insistent to say like, let me give you a ride. I don't know, creepy stuff. Anyways, I've got one tired puppy here one tired little girl and I think we're gonna go ahead and go but I hope you guys enjoyed this video nonetheless kind of a weird dark 
creepy video. I don't even know what to say about it. The entire time when it was happening, I was like, this is going to make such a good story time. So at least I have that. I hope you guys still enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I love you all so, so much and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Say bye.